Okay, here we are, Black Dyke Fishery in, um, just trying to think if we're in Suffolk still. Yes we are, over near Lake and Heath. Uh, my go-to smaller water. Really, really had a lot of fun here. Only discovered it last year and um, great water, super fishery, really well run, nice fish, very nice people, very welcoming um, and just a fun, fun water. It's about half an hour from me, so it's, uh, it is my local. Basically the setup is, come in, take an envelope, decide what you're gonna do, got your prices up there, which I think are really, very reasonable. Rowing boat, which is five quid. Might take that out later. Um, very still today. Normally it's howling when I come up here. It'd be nice to have maybe a little bit more of a ripple going on. But anywho. So uh, basically I'll get myself signed in, see what people have been catching on. Fab. Damsel, Sedge, da, 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 complete cross section there. Um, okay, let's get cracking. Um, I spoke about this reel last time. It's called a Piscifun. P I S C I F U N. It's all aluminium. They cost fifty pounds. Smooth as you like. Absolutely fantastic reel. Well, I'm probably going to buy another one of these, to be fair, just to um, help my addiction for um, perching fishing tackle. So that has the Witchwood Rocket Shooter or Rocket Rocket Lead and Rocket Head line. It's a floating line, weight forward, uh, casts really, really well. Um, so that that's going to be on my other setup to start with. So one fished right on top, washing line. And then the other one will be fished um, with a um, shrimp on the point, about a 12, 13, 14 foot leader rather. Um, so that, that would hit the bottom here. I think at its deepest point, it's about 14 feet. <clears throat> um, and that's how I'm going to start. Okay. Uh, I did mention last time the leader that I've gone on to is this Sea Guard Grand Max. It's uh, quite expensive, but extremely thin 0.21 of a millimeter for a nine and a half pound breaking strain. Um, so most of my leaders now are tied using that. Um, and it's a straight through leader I use. I don't use a tapered leader. Okay, so I'll get set up and uh, yeah, see how we get on. Great facilities here. Tea, coffee making, got lavatories there. Got a couple of boats, which you can take out for five quid for the whole day, which is not a lot. Um, I'll try off the pontoon. I might take a boat out later actually. I'll just see how my day goes. Um, I've done a three fish catch and release ticket. And now it is time to get fishing. Okay, so I've got my camera set up. First cast. Basically going to fish a daddy long legs on point. So a foam body daddy long legs. It's going to create a washing line. Got uh, a cruncher and then something else. I can't remember what else. We've got a cruncher and that buzzer, white and yellow buzzer. See lots and lots of roach flashing down there. Lots of flashes. What I'll do, I'll fish to this corner for a while just because this corner always seems to work quite well. If it doesn't, oh, yeah, there we go. As I say, this corner seems to work quite well. Second cast. On point fly, daddy long legs, it would appear. Quite a nice looking fish, a couple of pounds. And this is barbless here, so 
mean, if you search for well, research well, so barbless or not. So it's a good sign if you've been here five minutes, second cast, you caught a fish. And I think I'm caught around someone else's line here. I just saw some line. Oh no, it isn't on my daddy long legs, it is on it's either the cruncher or the um, nymph. Not, I call them nymphs all the time, buzzer. Cruncher or buzzer, that's on the um, dial back rather. Cruncher. All right, that's a really good start to the day. Okay, just gonna pop the fly next to the fish. I have um, dealt with him with a priest, so he's not suffering now. So that is what I took him on. Uh, I didn't feel the take, I saw the line the straighten, it was very, very quick, sort of straightening the line and just struck it. Okay, so that's the first one. Quite a chubby little thing, he's obviously been eating a lot because. There's something going on there. Right, second cast and a fish. Can't be bad. Right, let's get back to it. Well, I am not alone anymore. I have now got a bloodthirsty horsefly buzzing around me. So I might get more bites than I am hoping for, or certainly a different kind of bite than the one that I want. Horseflies, tenacious little buggers. When we fish in the Keys in Florida, they can be a real problem. And I don't know what it is about them. If we're on the boat and my wife and I, well, my wife and I are on a boat, and sometimes we have friends come out with us as well, it's always me they bite. Oh, I hear the little sod going around my head every now and again. I'm just waiting for the pain to hit. Okay, hey, moved round because the wind has moved round quite a lot and I wanted to get to a point where there was a bit of ripple which there is over here now also because the wind's coming slightly from my left I'm not likely to hook myself I'm going to try this for a little while and then ultimately um, I'm sure that at some point I'm going to get in the boat um, just because you can obviously cover so much water well, you can cover all of the water, can't you? You're not restricted to anything. So I've still got the daddy long legs on point fly. I've got a, a cruncher and a dial back, I think is what I've got. Oops, let's just get that out. The wind is really weird. It has done a complete 180 from where I was earlier today. Again, I can't see the bloody dry fly. Right, I'm just relying solely on watching my line now or get, feeling it. I mean, if it really goes, it goes, doesn't it? But if I see any kind of, oh, I don't see it now. No, I can't. Oh, there we go. That's funny, I had a take, a little tentative take, left it, and then off it goes again. First, I was, I was tempted to hit first time, but it really was a little, a little list of takes. Ooh, willow. Got some bump to it. Try and keep him out of those reeds. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, he's a fighter. Oh my good grief. 
I know these reeds are really strong and he's right in them now. Come on, I don't really want you in there. Especially if one of my other droppers hooks around something. Another stocky. A lot of vump to him, to be fair. But they always seem to have a lot of goat trout. Get the odd one now and again. Funnily enough, the biggest trout I caught last week at Grafham was four pounds, and of the three that I caught, I'd say it put up certainly the shortest fight. It didn't play the others too. Went nuts for ages. Hopefully, going to show you how I tie my um, droppers and leaders because the leader is um, got in the right tangle. So <clears throat> I'm going to take this is the end going to the um, fly line. I've got about four foot left on this at the moment. So basically, I get the other end and I overlap the lines and I get nearer the um, probably got about eight inches of overlap there. I'm getting to one end of it and I'm putting the two lines together and I'm making a loop like that <clears throat> the long tag end i'm going through in one direction so all the way through so i'm not sure if this is showing up on camera or not so we'll see so make a right pig's ear of this it doesn't help that i haven't got my glasses on right through once through twice okay so basically that's gone round the line twice now this one I'm going to go in the opposite direction so I'm going through once round both lines through twice oops if I get it round and through so then I'm going to get both ends wet that really well and just pull them tight and then pull my other line and pull the tag ends tight again again just make sure it's all knotted down <coughs> and what that will do is leave you that okay so the shorter tag end i'm going to cut that off Okay, that leaves me a non-sliding, non-slipping, really stupidly strong dropper. You're safe, I know you're behind me. <laughs> you need to whistle or something. Sing a little song as you walk along. <laughs> wondering what I was on about there it's very easy on a back cast to hit someone earlier when I first turned up um, a guy was casting and I don't think he realized just how far it was coming over the fence there into the car park where I happened to be so got to be a little bit careful now anyone wanting to improve audio on um, a GoPro what I invested in recently are these. Okay, they're just a little foam cover and it goes right the way around the camera. So I've got one on the, the one that's filming this and I've got the one on my hat. They cost about five quid. And if you want to kill wind noise on your videos, a simple, cheap way, they're flipping brilliant. Really, really good. And then um, someone mentioned that I had sort of fairly good audio the other day on one of my videos and what I'm doing I am taking the audio from this camera, even the camera this on the tripod. So that camera, I'm not using the audio on that at all. All of the audio comes from this one and I'm using DaVinci Resolve 17, I think, 
and basically I'm, I'm splicing together film from both cameras <clears throat> but I'm taking all the audio from this one so I find the spot on that camera sync it with with the film on this camera and once you've got it synced you can just kill the sound on that camera and have the sound from this camera even when you're seeing shots from that camera you're actually getting film from my hat cam and obviously because that is just so close to to my face and my mouth when I'm talking you tend to get pretty good um, audio so really cheap easy way of getting pretty good audio right let's try and catch fish now. Mm -hmm. 